Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And uh, today's video is all about On One Photo Raw 2023. And this is another video in my kind of beginner's guide getting started series. This is all about portrait editing in Photo Raw. Some great tools there. And if you do a lot of portraits, I think you're gonna find them to be really handy. Let's get into it. I've got a portrait here. This I got from Unsplash. It is not my portrait, it is a stock photo. Um, I do recommend before you do anything on the portrait tab, which is right over here, that you go into develop and basically develop your raw file if you have one or whatever you're starting with. And do the edits that balance out the light and do the kind of things that you might want to do. Uh, this one's actually quite nice, to be honest. It's probably previously edited because it is a stock photo. So I'm just going to skip that tab and go straight into portrait. And when you do that, you give it a second and it's going to detect the face in your photo. If there are multiple faces, it will detect multiple faces. You'll see that up here. Uh, there's a face right here, which represents this instance of the tool. But if there's multiple faces, you might have other faces over here and you can click on them individually to separately edit each face. Very powerful. If for some reason there's another face and it doesn't recognize it, you can click there to add face and then select it. Now, in terms of the mask, I click here to look at the mask. And if I click view, View, you can see the mask and it's done a pretty good job of isolating the face but you might need to refine the mask depending on how it's been applied in this case maybe I want to come in with the brush and just come over here and maybe paint in a little bit around her hair just so that I'm not including that in any of the edits that I do of course I missed a spot so I need to clean that up a little bit here so let's say I'm happy with the mask. I'm gonna go ahead and click view again so I can go back into that. And that mask is where all these edits are gonna apply. This portrait AI, uh, obviously AI-based portrait editing, but it's face AI is really what it is. There's not really any body settings or things like that. Now you've got an overall opacity slider, which is for the entire filter. And so uh, you can uh, use this at the end of your edit to reduce the effect. That's normally how I use it. I rarely use it early on because I feel like I want to get to the end of my edit before I decide if there's an opacity adjustment that needs to be made. Frequently there is. I might find that I'm kind of overdoing some things, but you know, it happens. There's a default style that's applied. It uses AI to analyze the face and decide, okay, I'm going to apply either subtle or strong adjustments based on what preferences you have set up here in your preferences menu. I've got it set to subtle, which is the default. I'm going to leave it at that but it's gonna default here to retouching of 50. And below that, I've got a details section where I can go in and make further refinements. Talk about that in a second, but retouching using AI to automatically analyze the face and apply those subtle adjustments. Looks pretty good here, to be honest. I can, of course, increase it if I want to. You can see the skin gets a bit smoother and things like that, or I can take it down to zero, in which case there's not really any edit being applied to the photo. I'm going to put it back at 50 and jump into this details drop down. Now here there's a frequency separation. That's the default. And that's really, I believe, where you should stay. The other option is surface blur, but that is only there to provide compatibility with presets from earlier versions of On One Photo Raw. I don't feel like you really need it unless you've got some old presets from old versions. But as you can see here, there's a blemishes slider, so you can increase or decrease that. And that's just going to smooth things like fine lines and wrinkles. There's a detail slider, which can actually help you bring back a little bit of detail into the photo. Smoothing is going to actually enhance or increase the amount of skin smoothing. Texture here actually applies additional texture as sort of an overlay. And then shine is going to actually, let me take that to zero. That's going to reduce kind of the uh, visibility of hot spots. Sometimes you get a little bit of bright light in certain areas. It's going to help smooth that out and basically create a little bit more balanced light across the face. If you look here, some of like the bridge of her nose or forehead, a little bit around her mouth and chin, are, they're not exactly hot spots, but they're a little bit brighter. And as I drag this, you can see that that's basically going away. So there it is at zero and there it is at 100. I use that slider quite a bit because I always find that there's some light from somewhere that's like hitting the face of whoever I've uh, taken the photograph of and that shine removal helps quite a bit. So all told, you've got a lot of power and control here and I really feel like the AI based adjustments do a really good job right out of the gate. I often have a little bit of refinement, but not that much. Okay, this next section is all about the face and the first slider is brightness very self-explanatory. Just be careful here because it's based on your mask. So if you increase very much, you can see that some of the areas that kind of bled outside of the mask are getting lighter as well. And I think you always want to be careful here because you want to kind of judge the overall look of the light in the uh, portrait and maybe not go too high. 
and sometimes might you know it might be that you need to go left and go a little bit darker um, i usually do a little bit of brightening here i just want to bring a little bit more visibility into the face but i probably wouldn't go very much slim face of course is going to do that if you uh watch it's kind of squishing the head for lack of a better word so if you shot your portrait on like a 50 mil or an 85 mil maybe a typical kind of a portrait lens focal length you may not need this again it can depend but what often happens is if maybe you don't have the right lens let's say you've got a little bit wider angle lens and you're a little bit close to the subject it can make their head look a little bit bigger this could come in handy it's experimentation uh, and which is really what i find with all of these sliders just experiment and move them around until you get the portrait looking the way you want the portrait to look. Now there's left eye and right eye size. You might find sometimes in some portraits that the eyes appear to be slightly different in size. Note that when I drag this left eye size, it's actually impacting her right eye. It's the left eye in terms of my visibility in the image, but it's her right eye. In this case, it actually might help to increase uh, her left eye size, which is this right eye slider. Uh, you can see as I drag that, it's, it's impacting that eye. I would never go really far. I might just go a little bit and give that eye a little bit of a bump. It's tiny, but you can turn off individual sections here by clicking the little radio button. So if I turn that off, you can see it's a little bit smaller, and now you can see it's a little bit bigger. And by the way, in each of these sections, you've got a little um, reset uh, button here. So you can just click that if you wanna hit reset. I think I'm fine with the face adjustments. I'm gonna go down to eyes. And eyes, also radio button here and a reset button. But one of the cool things about the way On One does this is if you have this little icon for an eye here, it's the eye tool. If you click it and then hover over the image, you will see that it's identified the eyes and it's laid this overlay on top of each eye. Now the center blue button allows you to move that around so that you can get it uh, directly where you want it to be on the eye. And then these other little buttons allow you to adjust it accordingly. So you can kind of bend it and move it around, collapse it or expand it to fit the eye. And so I'm doing a little bit of that here on that eye and I'm gonna do some over here on this eye as well. I recommend experimenting, get it the way you want it to look and it probably helps to zoom in. In fact, I would recommend zooming in quite a bit when you're editing a portrait. So uh, I've now got the eyes with the eye tool identified and basically masked for lack of a better word. So now brightness as of course, the name of the slider implies you can go in and increase the brightness of those. I find that comes in quite handy. Whitening, of course, is going to whiten the whites of the eyes. I think that's uh, frequently a nice add to a photo. I went all the way here just to make it more visible. Detail is kind of like clarity in the actual uh, center of the eye, so it creates a little bit crisper look there, which is cool. Dark circles, of course, will help remove those from the image, and brow enhance will darken her eyebrows. You can see there it is all the way effectively, which is overdone. But you know, her eyebrows are pretty light. I probably wouldn't go that far, maybe just a little bit, maybe like a 20 or something. Again, season to taste, every photo of course is gonna vary. And then you've got auto red eye removal. You can click that to take care of that if you need it. And to check the before and after, just click that button, eyes, there it is before, and there it is now. Probably a little bit overdone, but I'm gonna finish my edits and then I'm gonna go play with opacity and take a look at it that way. Now the mouth section has some great controls as well, including a mouth tool, much like the eye tool, but a little bit more complicated. So click that and you look here and you've got uh, basically two sections on top and two on the bottom. And that allows you to separate the upper and bottom lip in the uh, event that teeth are showing through. Now this portrait of course doesn't show any teeth, but regardless, it's still really good to kind of move these around and get the lip mask, for lack of a better word, or mouth mask aligned exactly where the lips and, and the lines of the mouth are. So something like that is probably pretty good. Once you're ready with that, you can come in here. If you had teeth showing, you could whiten those. Um, nothing's going to show here. There's a lip vibrance. So that's going to bring a little bit more vibrance to the lip. I like that. There's a brightness slider. So you can go left or right. Maybe I want to darken her lips just a little bit. And then there's a hue, so you can kind of change the hue of the lips, you know, within kind of a reasonable range. It's not creating like a lot of weird kind of looks. But you can see if I turn this on, there it is before. The lips are definitely a lot, um, I'd say tamer is maybe the right way to say it. And now they're a bit more vibrant, that sort of thing. I think they look pretty good overall. And if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is after. And this is a great example of over editing. Now I did some of this on purpose just to show you how the tools look. But this is where I would come back and say, hey, I want to take a look at the opacity because I feel like I've done too much. Some things are quite obviously too much, like the eyes are too white. 
uh, maybe the lips are too vibrant. You can go individually, of course, and adjust those sliders, but I'll often come in and take a look at the overall opacity and just say, hey, you know, at 100, it's too much. At zero, it's nothing. Maybe somewhere in between is a better fit. So maybe here in the 30s or 40s is a little bit better overall fit. Again, I exaggerated the edit on purpose just to make it kind of clear and a bit more visible for you in this video. But there it is before, and there it is with all my edits, even the overdone ones, but because I reduced the opacity, it reduced the intensity of those edits across the entire photo. So that's how that tool works. Now, there's a couple of other things to be aware of, and that is they do have adaptive AI presets, including portrait ones, and so you can go into portrait, and if you've got a kind of a clean background like this, you can come in and click on some of these AI adaptive portraits, and because it recognizes that portrait mask, it basically helps replace that background automatically, which I think is pretty cool stuff. You can create your own, blur the background, whatever it is you might wanna do, or if you don't wanna do this, you can also go into effects and let's say get a texture. So when you click to add a filter, as you know, if you go to textures, I can choose people, now this is gonna apply the texture to her. We're just gonna invert the mask. So let me click on people. And again, you can refine this mask if you want to. I'm gonna skip that here. I'm gonna go to textures. It's gonna load that. Of course, it put that on her, but it's quick and easy just to come in here and click invert. And there we go. I've quickly masked her out based on using the mask AI technology and applied a texture behind her. So you have a lot of different ways to do some creative things. And of course, you can build presets that include these textures. So if you wanna have your own adaptive AI presets, it's quick and easy to do. Bottom line, lots of power, lots of control, lots of ways to control the mask and the edits for portrait in order to get the portraits looking the way that you want. And then if you wanna go do some creative things like add textures behind them or swap out backgrounds, things like that, powerful, easy, fun, and quick in on one photo raw 2023 hope this gives you a good getting started beginner's guide my friends thanks for watching i'll be back soon if you enjoyed this one check out that on one video and i'll see you in the next one my friends you guys take care and until then adios